What do you see? Looks like a typical morning, doesn't it? But here's what we don't see. This is how much digital data we generate. Every second, every minute, every day, all around the world. In this episode, I discover the true impact of our digital clutter. And whether select all, move to trash, is the answer. This is our world today. Complicated ideas. New saturation. Information overload. We'll delve into the issues, break down the stories to see what matters and why it matters. We used to think that we needed more stuff to be happy. Now, we're getting rid of it. And we get rid of a lot of it. 7.7 .7 million tons of trash a year to be exact. But let's look beyond the obvious and tangible. There's a certain class of clutter we've overlooked. Our digital clutter. Computer science professor Dr. Anupam from NTU knows all about the staggering amount of digital data we generate. He's been studying it for 11 years. I want to find out from him exactly how much data we're producing. So we are collecting at least two to three exabytes per day right now. 90% of this data has been collected over the last two years in the whole history of human civilization. Wow, in our entire human history, ever since computers were invented? Exactly. We have already accumulated data in order of zettabytes. So zettabyte stands for 10 to the power 21. So 21 zeros. 21 zeros. In 2025, that means a few years from now, we will reach 175 zettabytes. If you put it in terms of Blu-ray discs, then we can reach over to moon and come back by the stack of Blu-ray discs several million times. Why are we collecting so much data? One category of data is the consumer data, mm -hmm. that we are sending more than a few thousands of tweets every minute. Mm -hmm. We are uploading hundreds of thousands of photos in Instagram. And there is a full class of data that is used for the industrial purpose mm -hmm. or the government's facilitation purpose. Mm -hmm. Like we collect the data about traffic, we collect the data about the weather, we collect the data about the movement of people so that we can better plan cities. Mm -hmm. So all these sorts of things are contributing to the data accumulation. Right. Do, do we need to be concerned about the amount of data that we are producing and, and accumulating? There is one uh, very simple back of the envelope calculation that I did some time back to figure out what is the most dense storage capacity that you can have. The growth rate of this atomic storage capacity will soon be outrun by the growth rate of the data production which means we will run out of storage. But by when will we run out of storage? So this number I calculated, estimated to be 200 years at most. So in 200 years, we will run out of storage space. We'll run now. out of storage space. Yeah, so Even if his calculations yeah, so add up, 200 years is a while away. Do we need to be concerned about our digital clutter right now? Perhaps the answer lies here, in this giant building with top-notch security. We always imagine our data to be virtual and invisible. But maybe it isn't. Wow, what is stored here? Suites like this uh, will store email, uh, video, uh, social media content sometimes. Uh, you know, anything that you do online. My cloud storage files? Exactly, yeah. It's going to be sitting within a server like this. 
How much data can be stored in the entire building? 300 plus million gigabytes of, uh, of storage. This data center is just one of over 50 in Singapore. And it already guzzles up 30 megawatts of electricity, enough to power an average-sized housing estate. Because with our humidity, we also need a ton of cooling equipment to keep these machines up and running. Is it right to say that the more data I use and store, uh, the more data centers we're going to need, the more energy we're going to need? Absolutely, there's a direct link. In 2018, the notoriously dirty aviation sector was estimated to have produced 2% of all global carbon emissions. That is 895 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. But did you know that the IT sector's emissions are projected to exceed even that? According to the IMDA, 130,000 HDB households consume as much energy as the 10 largest data centres in Singapore. That is around the equivalent of two Sengkangs. Darn, our data is dirty. The need to declutter seems all the more urgent. Especially when I learn about the privacy risks. When someone lives in a dump like this, we call them hoarders. In 2013, hoarding was recognised as a distinct mental disorder. But what if we can't see what we're hoarding? Should we still get the same intervention? I'm about to find out from a professional. I'm a professional organiser, so we help people to declutter their physical mm -hmm. and digital spaces. So, um, physical stuff, it's easy for us to see if we are hoarding a lot of stuff or it's disorganised. But how about our digital space, like on our laptops or, or de smart devices? I think the question is, if you find yourself running late for a meeting, you're <laughs> scrambling to find a particular document, mm -hmm. that's a sign that digitally something needs to be organised. So I'm really curious to find out how <laughs> you work with your clients. If you're in a co-working space, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are working on their laptops. This place hardly looks like a mess. Hello. Let me just disturb you for a while and ask you a few questions about your digital devices. Ah, uh, sure. That's one question already, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let's see what's festering behind these busy bees screens. So, Cheers, not me. This is my inbox, which is very messy. I, my excuse is that the messier things are, the easier it is for me to find a solution. So. The messier it is, it's easier? Again, like I said, that's an excuse. <laughs> that you, you get a prompt every day that your phone is running out of space. Yeah. Oh, okay. how do you live with that? <laughs> every day. I just click OK. <laughs> how do you organise your um, folders? Organise my folders? Mm -hmm. So everything is on a desktop? Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Alerts can be uh, set up with filters to go directly into a folder rather than cluster up your inbox yep. so you can see what's the more important things that you need to action on. There are maybe things that can move off into the archive. Folders and archiving um, need some time to set it up mm -hmm. but once you set it up then it will make a lot of difference you know, to the amount of things that you can yeah. see on the desktop as well as the uh, bookmarks. But I can't help but wonder, can we go on hoarding digital files as long as they are organised? To find out, I'm going to meet an old classmate of mine. You see, I did psychology in university. But nope, I'm not meeting these two. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jessie. Uh, or should I call you Dr. Jessie now? She has become an established clinical psychologist. Okay, I'm, I'm here to ask about like, um, uh, you know how we have so much um, clutter at our homes sometimes? Yeah. 
uh, and that also affects us psychologically. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about like digital clutter? Does it also have a psychological effect on us? It's quite similar to the physical clutter that we have in our house. Mm. Pretty similar. It causes the same amount of like pressure or like the stress on our mind because it takes up that same amount of space that you can use for like say creativity or like for focus on work. It's not physical, you don't really see it all the time. Right. Um, so does it really affect us in the same way? It doesn't matter whether is it visible or not visible, it's still in the brain, mm. you know? It stays in the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe sometimes needs the, the space, right? To help us plan, to help us think. When this becomes overwhelmed is that it triggers another part of the brain. It's called the amygdala. This is the part of the brain that generates like emotions. Mm -hmm. the, the most dominant one is anxiety or mm -hmm. fear, right? When there's too much clutter or there's, for example, emails, right? If this would continue to fire to a point where the body gets overwhelmed with anxiety. As I suspected all along, digital clutter can give us anxiety. But little did I know, that isn't the worst thing it can do. Have you ever done this? Snap a photo of your ID or passport to apply for something, emailed it to someone and then never looked at it again. I do it all the time. And apparently, people do it to me too. I wonder how many others share my bad habits. Actually, I storage all my documents in my phone. My scan of passport, uh -huh. my scan of ID. I don't have a habit of I think my IC, you know, taking ah. a while. So physically, your IC is not with you. It's at home. Yeah, yeah. But then your IC is with you digitally. Right. Yeah. How many photos do you have in your phone right now? I think she got more like 10,000 because she always saved every images that been sent to her. So your mom has more than you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, we are walking around with hundreds, if not thousands of personal photos and documents stuck in our camera roll, our email, download folders, and communication apps. And they could contain things you might not want other people to see. Okay. Can someone help me with that, please? Thank you. Oh. This is Paul. He's the CEO of Horangi a company that never fails to freak me out. Paul, oh. when I see your Horangi logo on your t-shirt, I'm just reminded of what happened last season. I was know where you went for your honeymoon. You do? Yes. Bali? Right. Paul is probably the best person to ask about the risks of storing too much stuff, even on reputable services like iCloud and WhatsApp. So recently with WhatsApp, Israeli firm had discovered that uh, you can actually um, sort of break the encryption um, by using WhatsApp calls uh, through a zero-day vulnerability. Um, and essentially, a zero-day is something that no one knows is there until someone uses it. What's your email? Sorry, I forgot. Um. I'm not going to tell the whole world. I know some things about cybersecurity. I like uh, your theme there. <laughs> like, for example, uh, Joshua, I just found uh, that uh, you've been pwned on six breach sites. To be pwned is to have had your information compromised in a data breach. A digital hoarder with information stored in multiple places is at even greater risk of this. Do you know that your email and information is out there? But what could hackers want with our individual personal information? For example, like if I know your IC number, uh, I could write you an email that says like, oh, Joshua, like, this is your IC number, I have this information about you, just need this last piece of information about your address, please send that to me. Probably the worst thing for you is if someone gets access to your social media. Maybe I message people that I know are close to you and ask them for money. So let's say a digital hoarder who keeps tens of thousands of photos or videos uh, on laptops or, or, or on his phone, um, but doesn't send them out. He should be safe, right? But these days, a lot of apps uh, ask for access to things like your camera roll, um, you just need to be cognizant as you give access to those apps. Uh, you know, that adds more risk. I mean, we, we want to use these services uh, and these apps. Um, and how else can we manage our digital clutter so that, and at the same time, you still use these apps and services? The main point is multi-factor authentication on every single account that will allow you to have it. 
uh, and that will reduce your risk probably by like 95, 99%. I think, like, for me, the best strategy is to, to like, remove things that you aren't using, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are a digital hoarder, then I guess that's not part of your yeah. thought process. <laughs> uh, so updating them is probably the next best thing to that. Sometimes, you know, app companies go out of business, uh, and if you keep those older apps on their phone, uh, essentially over time, vulnerabilities get discovered, and those apps become more successful and allow access to things like your photos or other things. Okay, I am spooked. The digital dump does have a real-life impact. So what's the solution to all this? So digital clutter is a much more serious problem than I thought. As you give access to those apps, uh, you know, that adds more risk. The body gets overwhelmed with anxiety. We'll run out of storage space. So how can I minimize my digital clutter? Marie Kondo tidies up physical spaces like no other. That's the kind of life-changing magic I need in my digital life. And one of her protégés is in Singapore. Amanda Ling is now our very first Conmarie consultant in training. She helps her clients to declutter their physical spaces. But this will be her first digital challenge. Could digital clutter actually be worse than physical clutter? In this day and age, I do believe so. I mean, would you think that you might be spending more time in your digital space than physical space? So now I'm just going to be like very brave and ask, please help me um, assess how I am doing in my digital space and how much decluttering I need to do. Yes, sure, I'll let yeah. do, yeah. Okay. So here we are. Cool. My laptop, I even brought my hard drive for good measure and my handphone. Great. Before we start, oh, okay. I'm going to ask in the Conmarie fashion, mm -hmm. what would you want to achieve at the end of this? Okay, so my idea would be like, I, I want to make sure that all my um, files are stored properly and securely, um, but at the same time easily accessible. Uh, I would like them also to be organized. <laughs> I know for sure now that they're not organized. So in real life, mm. <laughs> is to really kind of open it out. You want to actually bring everything like of a similar category into one single folder. So okay. it's just the same thing as in the Conrad method. In a physical way, when you put all your books on the table, that's when you're like, oh my god, why do I have so many books? And <laughs> it's the similar, I guess, response and reaction you might have if you are putting all your files in one folder and you realize that you've got like how many gigs worth of something. <laughs> okay. okay, so currently this is on my Dropbox. Uh, this is a script that I was writing. Okay. Yeah, a couple of years ago. I have no idea what this... This mm, is four there years you go. ago. Gosh. There you go. <laughs> the realization. <laughs> so this was a song that I wrote for my wife. Okay, so then what do I do now? Let's say, um, so we've started putting like the music into the music folder, mm -hmm. so which means later on I'll have to open up the music folder and sort yeah. which one yeah. I want yes. to keep and which one I want to delete. Yes. yes. Okay, so maybe we do another one for maybe documents. Maybe for mm -hmm. documents, yeah. Booking form, China visa, oh my gosh, there's so many things. At some point, it almost felt as if I had entered my computer. Whoa. Oh, there's so much stuff. Yeah, this folder was from uh, when I was organizing my daughter's birthday party. Um, yeah, it was Pokemon themed and hence all the Pokemon pictures. I don't if it's done and over, then maybe you could delete the, all these cutesy images. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I go. Okay, so this one, you see, this is a picture of my daughter. So do I want to delete this? Do I have this somewhere else? Is it a sentimental picture? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I would still suggest to keep it. Um, because if it's sentimental, I would then, you know, categorize as a last one to deal with. So 
Again, it's really coming, putting all the pictures into one single folder. Then you can slowly sort it out later on. Okay, done. Whew, what a relief. Okay, now let me get out of here. Now let's move on to uh, my handphone. <laughs> okay, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably going to be worse. Yeah, I mean, just looking at my gallery. Wow. Okay. There's something, there's a nagging feeling at the back of my head. So, okay, so here's the app drawer. Um. I, I do see that um, there's quite a lot of different apps within the same category. There are some times when you know that you don't really use that certain app. You could afford to actually delete it. So if you find that you do need it, then just, you know, re-download it. It's just a click away. All right, yeah, but I, you see, for but example, the right healings, I mean, I want to price compare? Well, yeah, maybe just kind of narrow down to like the next three. Sometimes when you limit the choices a little bit, it can give you some clarity in deciding which is best for you. Let's see your inbox. Okay, there's a lot of spam, I know. <laughs> yeah, so one thing is to unsubscribe from things that you might not be, you know, it doesn't really give you value. So instead of deleting, which what I was noticing you were doing, <laughs> yeah. setting a time to sit down and see which one you would like to unsubscribe and just go through that whole process. Just one time at a one time, do it all. Okay. You know what? Um, since you said it, unsubscribe, I'm just going to do it straight away now. Yeah. Wow, I feel a bit better now. Yeah. Clean. Cool. And, but that's a Spacious. baby step, right? Baby step. Baby step. Baby step. Baby step. Okay. Amanda yes. is clearly it's a big a fan of baby. digital yeah. minimalism. Really and I definitely see why. It really is about keeping track and being more intentional and deliberate. People might think, oh, digital minimum is so extreme, but it's actually even more extreme with the way that the consumption of digital content that we are actually exposing ourselves day to day. I'm going to give you the homework to finish. <laughs> I'll have to apply her culinary principles to all my devices, yeah. dump everything out, sort them out into categories, starting with the easiest, then keep only what sparks joy. I'll repeat the process over time. It's basic, but definitely not easy. There are many ways to deal with digital clutter, and minimalism may not always be the answer. For me, before moving all to trash, I'm going to figure out what actually sparks joy before discarding the rest. Because one thing is clear, digital clutter is a bigger problem than we all realise. Our security, our well-being and even the environment are all at stake. And that's why it matters. 